Thanks for joining us, Mr. Diabo. So why have you decided to run for uh, national chief? Well, I decided to run because I think we're in a situation just as critical as we were in 1969 with the white paper on Indian policy. This uh, recognition and implementation of rights uh, framework that Prime Minister Trudeau is pushing is basically to recognize and implement rights that they're defining, and they're going to use their fiscal relations policies to force us into accepting their definition of our rights. So I want to get that message out to the chiefs, our people, and the Canadian public that uh, the Trudeau government's perpetrating a fraud. That's why I've decided to run. So do you think uh, in the past four years since the last uh, AFN national chief, chief election, do, w explain to me what you think the, situa or the relationship uh, with Canada has been for First Nations people in Canada. Is it better, worse? How has it changed in this past four years? Well, I think it's worse because I think the national chief has failed to uh, keep control of the uh, process and um, He's basically been a cheerleader for this government. He's allowed this government to uh, take over uh, and define our, our terminology through nation to nation and reconciliation, uh, them giving their own meaning to it. Uh, they've Im imposed this 10 principles uh, basically to recolonize us, you know, these 10 principles on indigenous relationships. They've unilaterally decided to dissolve the Department of Indian Affairs and restructure the federal government without our people's involvement and even without AFN's involvement. So the national chief has failed to do any critical analysis of these changes to policy, laws, or structure. There is... And, um, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so, um, you know, based on that, I, I felt that I, I had to run to bring this out because... Uh, this legislation, if it passes this fall, is going to affect us for generations to come. There's um, a lot of people who say, many critics who say that they don't feel that AFN is uh, relevant and certainly doesn't represent the grassroots people. You've been a, a vocal critic of uh, AFN yourself. So what do you say to these, these people who are watching another election uh, come and go and maybe with a little disinterest? Well, I can understand their feelings, but, you know, when you're talking about AFN, you've got to talk about the PTOs, and you've got to talk the bad offices in our community, the chief and councils. It's the whole Indian Act structure that AFN is based on. So you can't just talk about dissolving AFN. You've got to look at dissolving the whole Indian Act colonial system. And one of the uh, parts of my platform is to go for fundamental reform of the Assembly of First Nations because I know it's not working, and it hasn't worked. You know, I worked for two past national chiefs, so I know that organization from the inside. And it definitely needs to be changed and include the people's voices more. But it's not just AFN. It's from the communities on up, you know, the band offices on up. We have to go beyond just the chief and council and band staff, you know, reporting to Ottawa. It's, it's a bigger system of change that we need, including in our thinking. We need to change our thinking before we can change our behavior. How do you even begin to, uh, to reconstruct what is the AFN? Where do you begin? Well, the AFN Charter provides for, um, you know, special assembly to be called to change the, or rewrite the Charter of the Assembly of First Nations. That's one of the first things that I would uh, um, work on is moving to get a special assembly as quickly as possible uh, to get the chiefs together to discuss how to um, rewrite the charter to restructure it because they're not even following the charter as it exists now. They don't hold Confederacy of Nations meetings, which is representation by population. Um, and the checks and balances that are in the charter are all messed up now because they're not relying on one body that, that the charter provides for, you know, the Confederacy of Nations. So that's what I would do is move quickly to uh, see the charter rewritten and the AFN fundamentally restructured. Uh, and then in terms of the Indian Act, so, I mean, you've got your hands full restructuring AFN if you're successful. Uh, Jody Wilson-Raybould had mentioned after, soon after her election uh, that there was a need to get rid of the Indian Act. Um, is there time within the mandate, do you think, this four-year mandate to, to even tackle something like that? Or is there a willingness? Look, the Trudeau government's been implementing a national plan. Um, as I mentioned, by dissolving the Department of Indian Affairs, having this secret law and policy review that uh, Jody Wilson-Raybould heads up, these 10 principles on Indigenous relationships, now they want to bring in recognition legislation, all of which are people who've had nothing uh, to say. You know, they haven't been participating in any of these processes. So it's the Minister of Justice, uh, Michael Warnick, you know, who was the Deputy Minister under Harper for 10 years, 
that's behind this plan. Mm -hmm. He's a clerk of the Privy mm -hmm. Council. Mm -hmm. So it's the Justice Minister, him, the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister's staff, and the Prime Minister's office who are really behind this plan. Uh, Minister Philpott and Minister Bennett, along with Joe Wilde, this Assistant Deputy Minister, doing this national engagement process are in front, but they're not really the ones implementing this national plan. And where's our plan? The AFN has failed to develop a national plan to counter what the Trudeau government's doing. As I said, they, they basically become a cheerleader for this government. And we need a national chief that will stand toe to toe with them and make sure that we have a national advocate, not a national chief. I appreciate very much your perspective and your time for this. Thank you so much. Thank you.